always wanted to be an actress and my parents were very wise and said look all these actors and actresses a lot of them are out of work so go to university get a degree then we will pay for you to go to drama college I went to university I got a degree but I also edited the student newspaper while I was there and I managed to get an exclusive with the then Prime Minister. I got an interview with a chap called Jim Callaghan. Rather than asking him all the questions like uh, you know, political questions that normal political reporters, senior proper journalists would ask him, I asked him things like what's your favourite food and um, do you have a dog and where do you like to go walking? That really inspired me to sort of go on to think well Yes, I quite like doing this. I quite like um, discovering stories, finding out facts, finding out about people. I think this, this could be the career for me. I've interviewed Dukes and I've been out with dustbin men on their dustbin lorries. So, you know, I've, I've seen life from every side in my job as a journalist and a reporter. So I've been very, very privileged to do that. And, you know, I've also been privileged to have had a job where I have never got up in the morning and thought, oh dear, I've got to go to work today. trained as a journalist in the late 70s, 80s, not through to the 90s. And journalism in those days was, was pretty much a man's world. So if you were a woman, you had to make your voice heard and you had to put up with a fair amount of hmm, what today would be considered inappropriate behaviour. I can never remember a day where somebody didn't make an inappropriate comment to me, a man didn't make an inappropriate comment. And I suppose really looking back, you know, you really had to battle, A, to get your voice heard as a woman, but B, to be treated in some sort of dignified way. I'd have to say that Lockerbie is the most memorable, the Lockerbie air disaster. I was working at ITN at the time as a newsreader, reporter, and I was sent up on the train and arrived early hours of the morning into this devastated town. And I always say it's rather like, I imagine it must have been like in the Blitz because we got out of our cars and there was just this smell of burning, this acrid smell, and there were little fires burning everywhere. Of course, it was pitch black, but there were, there were headlights and there were flashlights going and you could hear police sirens, etc. But despite that, it still felt really eerily quiet over Lockerbie. It was a place where I lived, where I had connections to, so I wasn't just coming in as a stranger. I knew some of these people. I knew a lot of these people on the ground. And so the trick there was to try to be really careful and really sensitive in how we filmed people and how we dealt with the story. And we're going back to Lockerbie now and Fiona Armstrong, who's talking with two of the most well-known residents of the town. Fiona. Oh yes, Alistair, here in Lockerbie, the people of the town are trying to face up to the reality, the enormity of the disaster that has hit them. We went in to see the baker at the time, who had come in much earlier than, than normal to start baking for all the people of the town, and baking for the emergency services and the police and the fire brigade and everybody, just trying to keep, keep some sort of normality in what had become a disaster zone. I think now there are more women in newsrooms than there are men, so how the tables have turned. My biggest inspirational women, gosh, there are so many of them. I could start with Queen Elizabeth I, Queen of England, who had the body of a weak and feeble woman, but the heart and soul of a lion and a lion of England. Then you can go on right through history with inspirational women. The suffragettes got us a vote, didn't they? Absolutely amazing. People like J.K. Rowling, who was a single mother who went on to become a best-selling author. I think it's very important to recognise the achievements of women, how far we've come, and also slightly to reflect how much further that we've got to go. So yes, it's very important. Do I have any regrets being a woman? Oh, goodness me, no. Who'd want to be a man? <laughs> a woman is the best thing. And when I knew I was expecting a daughter, that was the next best thing.